Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Rachel Nicole and in today's video I am going to be talking to you guys about best practices to write test cases. So before we get started, I'll give you a few seconds to grab your snacks, tea, and I'd appreciate it if you like this video before we get rolling. So today I'm going to be reading from some notes again, so excuse me if I'm not making 100% eye contact with you guys today. But, you know, you got the content here, and I feel like that's going to be a little bit more appreciated than some eye contact for this video. So, first and foremost, test cases need to be simple and transparent. So, to create test cases that are as simple as possible, they must be clear and concise as the author of the test case may not be the one to execute them. So you also need to use assertive language like going to the home page, entering test data, click on this, and so on. So this makes understanding the test steps easy and test execution much faster and simpler. The second step, so you want to create your test cases with the end user in mind. So the ultimate goal of any software project is to create test cases that meet customer requirements and is easy to use and operate. So a tester must create test cases, keeping in mind the end user's perspective. The third thing that a QI engineer might want to keep in mind is avoid test case repetition. So do not repeat your test cases. If a test case is needed for executing some other test case, Call the test case by its test case ID in the precondition column. Alright, the fourth best practice to keep in mind is do not assume. So, you don't want to assume the functionality and features of your software application while preparing the test cases. You need to stick to specific documents. The fifth best practice to keep in mind is ensure 100% coverage. So. Make sure when you write your test cases to check all the software requirements mentioned in the specific document. So essentially you want to make sure that no features of your application is left untested. Sixth best practice to keep in mind is that your test cases must be identifiable. So you want to name your test case ID such as they are identified easily while tracking your defects or identifying a software requirement at a later stage. Number seven is to implement testing techniques. So it's not possible to check every possible condition in your software application. Software testing techniques help you select a few test cases with the maximum possibility of finding a defect. So a little bit more into this is you could use boundary value analysis which is EVA, and as the name suggests, it's a technique that defines the testing boundaries for a specific range of values. The state transition technique, so this method is used when software behavior changes from one state to another following a particular action. So the eighth best practice to keep in mind for QA engineers is self-cleaning. So your test case, you create, it might return the test environment to the pre-test state and should not render the test environment. This is especially true for configuration testing. Number nine is repeatable and self-standing. So the test case should generate the same results every time, no matter who tested. And the final tip that I have for today for the best practices QA engineers to keep in mind is peer review. So after creating test cases, Get them reviewed by your colleagues. Your peers can actually uncover defects in your test case design, which you might easily miss. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video while we attack the best practices for writing a good test case. And if you guys have any other video topics that you'd like me to discuss, feel free to leave your comments down below. And if you aren't already a part of the family yet, what are you doing? Smack that subscribe and bell notification button so you never miss another post from me again. I'll see you next time.